Welcome back to DIY Life. This is going to be a shorter style video on the fire detection system. Today we do endeavor to get the entire system up and running perfectly, but you and I know that that's not usually what can happen with the ship that's been sitting for this long, but we'll have a red hot go. Some of the camera angles are a bit iffy because I'm focusing on the work and there's a bit of a click from my phone because it's in a case mounted on the chest mount. But other than that, I reckon it's a good video. So let's step on board and get into it. If you like it, please like, share, subscribe. Or do you want me to reconnect this? Because this is off. This was off. Let us, I'll just check the voltages. Yeah. Yeah, I see that battery here. Do you want this one off? Sure. Now, it's a wire everywhere. There you want the other one off, too. It's alright. I'll work it out. Six volts, 3.2. So that's in. The blue one goes over there, and the red one was not connected anyway. And this blue one across is a jump wire, isn't it? Oh, yeah, it's in series. It's in series, yeah. So that's that. Yeah. And that's that. Do we have a battery charger? I can't even remember. Um, what voltage is this supposed to be? Twelve volt, yeah. That's what you said, three point. Mm -hmm. Three point. Mm -hmm. Two point six, yeah. No, I know they're stuffed, but uh, interesting anyway. Yeah. So we just found these batteries need these batteries are in series to make twenty four volts, and that's backup power. Saying there's a fire there. Oh yeah, because it's been disconnected. Select one, two, disable. Silent buzzer. Let's test the bell. Testing bell. Uh, copy ash on radio. Yeah. Oh well, I'll set it off. Oh yeah? That's an alarm bell, so maybe a different bell. Oh yeah? Here, we got one here. Out here, maybe? Ooh. Engine room. Oh yeah. Up there. 
sure there's one in the companion line down the lower section. No. Interesting. Oh, well, there'd be one in here. Alarm bell, hospital bell. Huh. Nothing down there. Okay. The bells work. Oh, in the engine room, we've got the alarm going off on the alarm panel. For the fire detection system uh, engine room, there's a flame detector here. So it's got a lens, optical uh, lens to see flame, see color. But we've also got this heat or smoke one. I reckon it's a heat one that we're going to change out just because that fire panel is constantly in alarm, like a fault. It's either at fault or alarming for the engine room. And uh, there's uh, certainly no fire in here at the moment, so just got to do that, fit those batteries, and we should be underway with the system. All the bells work, so yeah. I'm gonna get this one out, see if we can get that puppy out. I think it's a different style. Yeah, we've got only one other one, but it looks different to that. Yeah, I'll just put it in. Yeah. 70 hour. Oh, United Kingdom. Ah. Ooh, look at this. It's like a flickering candle. Whoa. That one is this one. Yep. And that's. Ooh. Must be smoke. Because it's this radioactive. Right. It's got the radioactive this symbol. It says smoke. Oh, okay. Maybe a more. It's a different it's style. Totally different. Different style. Hmm. Okay, we got some batteries. So, time to fit those to the fire panel. <clears throat> they are back up. Um, Supply, but still very essential. Um, To go there. It's this puppy. It's a thingamajiggy. Where are we going? Positive to Negative. Yeah. 
putting the 12 volt batteries in series giving them double um, the hell? double the power this is a positive on there double the voltage <clears throat> how did that go that went like that you know the wires have a memory I didn't want to mess that around that should be charging now hello that sounds better alright bloody lovely I'll tell ya reset so general fault is gone that's great power supply fault is gone <laughs> this is a spoke how's the power supply fault oh maybe because the detector's out oh it's gone now didn't even press anything it's interesting These two were lit up. General general fault, power supply fault, because those batteries weren't in there. All right, so let's have a look. General fault is out now, which is great. The only one that's uh, dodgy is Zone Three engine room, and there's a photo sensing. Um, detector which senses flame so any light emits onto the photo I think it's a diode anyway it's got a little lens and then you got a heat detector so we changed the flame one to a brand new one and it didn't clear the fault so then we remove the heat detector one and we don't have a spare that we know of so it was last fitted in 1988, so uh, we'll see if we can get a spare one of those. Otherwise, I'm going to mount these batteries back in properly with these mounting parts here. Just trying to work that out. Oh yeah, that would have been like that. So anyway. So again, just showing the behind the scenes uh, tedious work that we're going to do. Um, don't have the correct screwdriver either, but it's a long way to walk down to get the right one. But it is a, an electrical one, so that's pretty good. Madonna. Some people ask me, why do you say Madonna? And uh, it all came from when I worked on the Sam Simon ship that uh, Sea Shepherd used to call their ship, which has changed now. Anyway, I worked in La Spezia, Italy, uh, near Cinque Terre, and uh, obviously was influenced by the Italian-speaking people of the country that I was in. And I could hear them saying, hey, Madonna, hey, what are you doing? You know, all that kind of stuff. I'm like, why are you saying Madonna? Like, oh, it's kind of like, oh, we're saying, oh, God. Oh, God, like that. Um, yeah, and there's a few other ones <laughs> that I won't mention, but, um, yeah, I do sometimes utilise some of the some of the stuff I've learnt throughout my career and my life because I, I, I'm very fond of the Italian and many different nationalities that I learn, so I utilise them in, in my regular life and it uh, enrich, enriches my life and I have fun with it. And those kinds of phrases help me in moments like this with this tedious, annoying, putting the work, putting these miniature screws back in. It's just so frustrating. But maybe I'm a bit OCD. I need them to be fitted properly back the way it was. It has to be. Oh, God. Um, so I guess that's a bit of a fault of mine, if you want to call it that. But it's going to be done right. Do it once. Do it right. That's the saying in Australia, at least, probably around the world as well. But yeah mate gotta get it all right mate
Yeah, so the Sam Simon ship is a pretty interesting story. Sam Simon, the co-creator of The Simpsons, donated money so Paul Watson and Sea Shepherd could purchase a, a boat. Uh, it is named a different name, but I don't really care about that name because I don't really care about Sea Shepherd anymore. Um, all about Captain Paul Watson Foundation. Irregardless, that Sam Simon ship was bought by Sea Shepherd at the time under the radar from the Japanese government. And the Japanese government and their Japanese crew delivered it to Brisbane, Queensland, Australia, I believe. Definitely to Australia. It was all white and uh, they delivered it and it was a really cool thing. And then obviously Sea Shepherd got a hold of it and it was used against the Japanese government against their uh, whaling in the Southern Ocean in Antarctica. And that was the first time... Uh, I went to Antarctica, was that same campaign where the Sam Simon was used. I was on this ship, the Steve Irwin, for the first time ever mm -hmm. at sea. So the first time I ever worked at sea as a diesel mechanic was on okay. this ship. For, sure. And I was on this ship for three months straight, 95 days or so. So that was a mm -hmm. bit of a jump in the deep end, you could say. But I, I don't regret it and oh, I love yeah. it. And... Um, yeah, I love the experiences I've had in the seven years that I work with Sea Shepherd. And uh, I, although I don't like the direction and what happened with Sea Shepherd, have a look at um, online about it if you want. I won't belabor the point anymore, but I am thankful for all that time. Uh, but here we are now putting all these tedious, annoying little screws in and hopefully distracting you with these cool little stories. I do have many stories, as do many of the crew that I've sailed with and crew before me. She's so good. many cool stories, so maybe one her. day we can chat to them. But anyway, here we go. So that's not finished because we still need that detector to, to, to fully commission it. But in other regards... We should get some uh, canned smoke, so you can psh, smoke, test the smoke detector ones. Get a heat gun to test the heat detector ones and yeah, run around the ship and test them all. Hey, so thanks again for tuning in. Um, as I just said, uh, we've got to get that uh, other detector fitted and then test everything. So it's not fully finished, but hopefully it's a bit of an insight into the uh, fire detection system and what we've got to do obviously the co2 release system has to be um, recommissioned properly the bottles are going to be uh, being crack tested and all that kind of stuff and they should be returning to the ship at some point to get that work done and that'll be all certified and done and then the ship is very close to going on the first sea trial in many years so that's very exciting there has been other work being done uh, the alternators I want to share some information of the re-excitation of generator number two and then finally gen generator number three from Warren the electrical contractor and uh, Bill and Ashley have done some great work there that's why we can parallel the last two alternators on the last video that's really good. Um, there's electrical fault tracing, which is uh, to do with the preference trip circuit on the uh, 240 side of the switchboard. That's supplying a few things that I want running, mainly the air conditioning in the engine control room. Um, and then there's also more minor, but still important, the main engine jacket water heaters, the block heaters. Uh, they're being renewed into new... Um, style of uh, elements and that's going to allow us to preheat the engines and uh, keep them at a good operating temperature not operating temperature good standby temperature sometimes when the engine cools down after it's been hot and you don't keep it warm the liners shrink a bit and then they leak the jacket water um, underneath the head off the top of the liner you know into the build so that sucks so yeah might do some of those videos but if not um, stay tuned and see you in the next one